G'day guys, I'm back. Uh, today I thought I would do a flip and drag with the black negative space. Now this one is one I did a couple of days ago, um, flip and drag with the white negative space. You may have seen it on one of the Facebook painting, pouring painting groups. So I wanted to see if I can do something like that again but with black. So what I use is Floetrol for my pouring medium and I'm using Global Fine Art Impasto Acrylics as opposed to the Global Flow Acrylics which are really thin and runny. Um, the Global is an Australian brand so if you're not in Australia and you still want to use um, my recipe then um, if you can get Liquitex Basics it's a very similar consistency to the Global. It's quite a thick, it's kind of like yogurt I guess. Thick consistency. So for my base, I'm using four parts Floetrol to one part paint. So in this big cup, I have 320 grams of Floetrol to 80 grams of paint. So that's four to one. I do like to weigh everything that way. I know that it's all going to be the same consistency. It's all going to flow at the same rate. If you have one paint that's thicker than the other, it will stop and it won't let the others flow. Um, so it needs to be all the same. With my paints, I'm using three parts Floetrol to one part paint. So in these I have 60 grams of Floetrol and 20 grams of paint. So that's 80 grams in each cup. Green light, turquoise, cobalt blue, um, Cool blue and this is a navy blue which is cool blue and a bit of black and a touch of green in it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray my cups with this silicone. Just a little spray in each. And then I'm going to wipe out the excess. That is just to help the paint flow out of the cup. Make sure we get it all out and it doesn't get stuck in there. So I'm just going to have a little bit of silicone left in the cups. The well, silicone I'm using today is this coconut milk. Its um, base is dimethicone. You can get it from Woolies. It's made by Organics. It's a squirt bottle, so it's a little bit difficult to get one or two drops out of. So I've put mine into this little squeezy bottle, and it's much easier to get one or two drops out. So my ratio, as I said, three parts Floetrol, one part paint for most of my paintings and one drop of oil, whether you're using the coconut milk or the silicone treadmill oil, one drop per 30 grams. This has got 80 grams, so if it was 90 I'd use three, but I'm only going to use two today, two drops, because it's very strong, this stuff. I, just, I don't want like a whole heap of cells. If you've got too much oil in there, your cells, they kind of spread into each other and you just have a big mess of cells without having any negative space in between them. So just two drops today in the 80 grams of paint, mixed paint. One, two. And what you want to do is just go one, two, one, two, one, two. The more you stir your silicone in, the more it breaks up in your paint and you're going to get tiny little cells instead of the big cells that everybody seems to want. This is an old canvas, one I've poured over before, so I'm just reusing it. It's a 45 by 60. I do have get the paint off my hands. I do have this little chart that I've made. Again, you may see it on one of the painting 
groups on Facebook. So for this size canvas, you would need at least 700 grams of mixed paint. If you want a copy of that, let me know. So this cup is 400 grams of paint. By the time I've mixed these five cups together, it will be another 400 grams, so it's 800 grams. So I don't mind having a little bit more paint, but I certainly don't want less paint. I'd rather have more. So I'm going to pour this all over. silicone in the black. Your black and your white paints are the heaviest paints, they're the highest density pigments in the acrylic paints. So you want those paints to sink to the bottom when you've got a mixture of paints. The heavy paints sink to the bottom, they push the lighter paints with the silicone oil up to the surface and that creates your cells. So you need your heavy paint, which is your black or your white, as your negative space, with no silicone oil in it. And I'm leaving it quite thick in the middle, making sure we have got all the edges, but leaving it quite thick in the middle, because I want my dirty pores to just float nicely over the top. There we go, these little spatulas are really good for covering your canvas and also doing your sides. So I'll start layering the paint. I'm going to do two cups because I don't want the layers to be too thick. So I'll just do half in each. And just layering them gently. I don't want them to mix too much at this stage. Light, dark, light, dark is your best option. will give you the best cells. Light on dark, dark on light. That's one cup. And we might start the other way with this one, the light on the bottom. to the green. Navy blue is one of the colours that will work best for cells. It's a lovely colour. It does give really pretty cells against a light colour. If you're using metallics you need to make them a little bit thicker. We use two to one ratio for metallics. Two parts Floetrol, one part paint. Because in a pour, you just lose the metallics. They all sink to the bottom. Okay, so there's our two little cups. Well, one's bigger than the other. I'll start up here. I'm just going to flip it over like that. And the other one, I'll just do there. Wait for it to drop down for a minute. do is basically just move the paint around the canvas. I do want to have a little bit of black negative space. I'll just release the pressure a little bit. Push the paint around. I'm not dragging it on the base of the canvas. Just pushing it around basically, floating it on the top. done. 
and that one done. I'm just going to wait a minute, let those cells come to the surface. As I said before, the black paint is going to sink to the bottom. It was all mixed together there and now the black sinking to the bottom. The silicone or dimethicone oil is rising to the top and it's bringing the different colours of paint with it to the surface. And that's how you're going to get your cells. I'm not going to torch at this stage. I don't want massive, massive cells. I know everyone wants massive cells but they can be too big. Once we start tilting the canvas, they are going to stretch. We're going to get them bigger than this. You can always torch afterwards if you want to. So I know 800 grams of paint seems like an awful lot for a canvas, but you want the paint to be able to move. If the paint sticks to the bottom, um, the cells are going to break. So you want lots of paint, more than you expect. You're better off having more than less. Okay. So there's a little bit of a bald spot just there where the cups touch the canvas. So I'm going to come this way first and cover that. So that's got that. I'm going to take the weight of the paint back to the centre of the canvas. I'm going to try for the other corner just to move the paint around a little bit. I don't want too much in the middle. It will never dry. There is a lot of paint on the canvas, as I said, 800 grams. This is going to take about five days to dry. It moves really nice, fluidly. I don't want to go over the corner because I want a bit of negative space there. Bring the weight of the paint back to the centre. Always bring it back to the centre before you start tilting in another direction. Otherwise you're going to stretch all your cells out of shape. happy with that. I don't really want to stretch it any further. It would be nice bringing it up this way a little bit but once I start moving it this way all that's going to get overstretched. Try a little bit see what happens. Us pourers we have to learn to say stop and walk away, stop fiddling because we go too far and we ruin things and then we wish we'd never done that extra little tilt. So less is more, when you're happy with it just stop. The more you tilt the more you're going to break your cells. Okay, so Leave that as it is. Now I'm going to just torch with a little heat gun here just to get the bubbles away. You may bring up a few more cells but basically just want to get the bubbles out, pop them all. See in the light paint there, there's more cells coming up through the light paint. So we'll get a few more little ones coming up, but pretty much all the silicone is at the surface now. Once it's come to the surface, you won't get any more cells. If your paint's really runny, your silicone's going to be on the top pretty much straight away. 
and you won't get cells because you need the paint to come up through the surface, through those other layers of paint with the silicone to make cells. So if your paint's really thin and runny, your silicone's already at the top, you won't get any cells happening no matter how much silicone you put in. Treadmill, treadmill silicone works really well as well. I use both. So if I put that extra drop of silicone in here, in each cup, you wouldn't really have any definition between the cells. It would have just been a big mass of cells. So you probably could have got away with one drop in each cup as well. But still happy with this. Let's touch this little bit up here. I don't really like this little bit of ghosting there, I guess. Lighter colour. Let's touch that up. Cover it up. And that's it. Leave it at that. So I hope you enjoyed that, Paul. Please have a go. It's a lot easier than it looks, really. <laughs> you just have to get the right consistency of paint to create your cells. Okay, bye. See you next time.